service. I hope each one of you picked up a bulletin. I'm not going to go over all the things that's in the bulletin. I will highlight a few things. You know, uh, if we have any visitors, we want you to know you're an honored guest with us today. Uh, let's remember all our shut-ins that's in the bulletin are sick. we got a few to add to that. Uh, David Eller and I see you in Chattanooga. He's got COVID, and that's Buzz Burkhart's cousin. So let's remember him as he's in the hospital. Also, Vernon called this morning. He's not feeling well, so let's remember him. Also, uh, Judy Brown's grandson, Jace Brown, he broke his right foot on the growth plate. So uh, he's 11 years old, and he's having a hard time not getting running around. So let's remember him as he heals from that. Also, Daphne and the boys are feeling some better, so let's keep them in our prayers also. Uh, Deborah Clark is supposed to go see a surgeon tomorrow, so let's uh, keep her in our prayers as she goes see the surgeon. Also, I'm going to say I've got this off the top of my head. Barney told me that he had the place removed off the top of his head that it was cancerous, but it come back benign. So he's everything's good with him. So that's that's great to hear that. Also, it's good to see Charles and Ruth and her daughter-in-law with them this morning. Glad y'all are here with us. We love seeing y'all. Also, let's remember uh, Charles Moses and uh, Laurel is her uh, husband. He passed away, I think it was a week before last. So let's remember that family in our prayers. They're having a hard time. And also, they was told that uh, Charles' is, uh, glaucoma is getting worse. So let's remember him also. Our fellowship meal will be after our morning services, and there'll be plenty to eat. So I hope each one of you stay and eat with us. And I think that's all I have. Into our worship service this morning, our song will read to be Joel Foster, our scripture reading Ray Moore, our lesson by Dennis Strine, and our closing prayer will be by Rusty Maddox. And we'll begin our worship service with opening prayer. If you will, you please bow with me. Our kind, lovely Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Lord's Day. We thank you for our health and our strength that allows us to be here. We thank you for being able to be out with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who came to this earth, he lived and died as a man, set an example for each and every one of us. He hung up on that cruel cross and shed that blood for each and every one of us so we could have permission of our sins to do thy will. 
I also pray at this time that you'll be with all of our number that are shut-ins, our sick, the ones that's lost loved ones, the ones that's going to be coming up having surgeries, our senior <coughs> surgeons, pray that you'll be with each and every one of them, be with the doctors and nurses and the ones that take care of them, <coughs> that they may return back to their health and be back with us. We thank you for our visitors that are here with us today, for Charles and Ruth. Pray that you'll keep them safe as they're here and that, you can, that they will return them back as they travel when they go back home. I also pray at this time that you'll be with our brother Joel as he leads our singing. They will all lift up our voices of praise unto you. Be with brother Dennis as he brings our lesson. He'll have a ready recollection of the things that he studied. Pray each one of us will take these things that he teaches unto us, we'll study them ourselves, apply them to our lives, be stronger Christians. And as we go out in the world, people will know we're Christians by just the way of things we do. Pray that we'll also go out in the world and try to teach others thy word, and they can be Christians before it's everlasting too late. Also pray that, that you'll be with us here at Malden, that each and everything we say and do here always will be according to thy will. Pray that you'll be with our leaders of our nation. Pray that they'll look unto you for guidance and they'll do things that is according to thy will. Pray that you'll be with all the first responders and ones that protect us. That you'll keep them safe as they do their jobs. Pray that you'll be with the military, especially the ones on foreign souls. Pray that you'll keep them safe, bring them back to their homes, <coughs> be thy will. Pray that you'll always be with us, that you'll always guard, guide, direct us, that you'll kill us all in any sin. Christ, I'm going to pray. Amen. Morning. Morning. Four, three, eight. Four, three, eight. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath is covenant, his blood, support me in the whelming flood, when all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone. All blessed to stand before the throne On Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground is sinking sand <clears throat> Keep your minds for taking the Lord's Supper 978 Nine, seven, eight. Oh. 
as we gather around the table this morning, let's focus our thoughts on Christ as he gave his life and he died on the cross for each and every one of us. The Lord's Supper is a memorial of Jesus' death. For as often as we eat and drink this cup, eat the bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. When we take the Lord's Supper, we are remembering Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. The bread and the juice are tangible, visible reminders of Christ's love. The Lord's Supper is a chance to bring ourselves before the Lord and partake in the life he has given us through his death and resurrection. Now as we are, we were eating, Jesus took, as they were eating, Jesus took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body. And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. We'll now have the prayer for the bread. Heavenly Father, as we prepare to partake of this, the bread, which we know represents Christ's body that hung there on the cross, may, may we reflect on the suffering that Christ went through, the great suffering that he, he went through, which allows us uh, the opportunity of everlasting life if we only obey. May we partake in a manner you find pleasing. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'll have the prayer for the fruit of the body. That's right. And the Father, all of this this morning, give it to us. Take this uh, cup, and it said, and the cross of Calvary, and let that crucified on the cross. Drink it, have reason. Jesus Christ, amen. Amen.
that concludes the Lord's Supper. Another part of our worship service is giving back. <coughs> giving back to God is commanded. And it's something that should be done with an open and cheerful heart. Each one must give as he has decided in his or her heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loveth a cheerful giver. We'll now have the prayer for the offering. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful and grateful for all that thou hast given unto us in this life. So many good things. Nothing compares to the gift of thy Son. same thing, a small portion of what you have blessed us with, we give back to thee. May it be much good to the furtherance of thy cause here on this earth. There are so many that are in need today, Father, especially spiritually. seems to be so much more than we would give. But we ask that you bless what we give. For it's in Jesus' name we give thanks unto thee, Father. Amen. Amen. Five, six, four. Five, six, four. <clears throat> Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tenderest care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us. For our use thy foes prepare. Jesus. 
Jesus, Thou hast loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast loved us, love us still. Five, four, zero. <clears throat> to walk in the 
The first part of the Old Testament was filled with a lot of exciting things. We have the creation, the flood, the lives of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the exile of Joseph, Moses, the burning bush, the ten plagues, the crossing of the Red Sea, the giving of the Ten Commandments. But as we get into the middle of the book of Exodus, a change takes place. It is filled with minute details. So many of them, as a matter of fact, that it's difficult to keep them all straight. Now, have you ever wondered why God had all these little details written down? See, God, our God, is a God of minute details. Only God knows what will please God. Only God knows what is best for his people. And so God had given Israel a pattern to live by. And at times those patterns contain minute details. In Exodus chapter 25, God begins to instruct Moses on minute details for things like the building of the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant, the altars, right on down to the clothing of the priests. And in verses 8 and 9 of Exodus chapter 25, it reads, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell in their midst. Exactly as I show you concerning the pattern of the tabernacle and all of its furniture, so you shall make it. Friends, the Bible is two things. It is a love letter and it is a pattern for living. So many today diminish the importance of God's pattern. It is called pattern theology. They claim that even though God had an exacting pattern for the Israelites to follow, God does not want to bind us 
in such a pattern today. But I'd like us to look back at the last clause of Hebrews 5 and verse 8. For in it the Hebrew writer said, See that you make everything according to the pattern that was shown you on the mountain. Now I'm not advocating that we are bound by the old law. Not one bit. But what I am saying is that God has a pattern for the Israelites, and he also has a pattern for his people to follow today. The dictionary tells us that a pattern is an example, an outline, a guide, a model, a specimen, a shape, something to be followed. And in the language of the New Testament, the Greek, the word translate as pattern. It's a verb. It means to strike, to stand, to strike as a coin. This word, the Greek word, has been translated as print, like the nail prints in Jesus' hands and feet in John 20 and verse 25. A fashion or figure that we find in Acts chapter 7, verse 44, where it says that Moses made everything according to fashion or figure, depending on your translation. In 1 Timothy 4, and verse, 22, or verse 12, it is an example. Let no man despise your youth, that Paul tells Timothy, but be an example and a pattern, which we find in Hebrews 8 and verse 5. See to it that you make everything according to the pattern that was shown you on the mount. When we read through the Bible, we can find different biblical instances where an exact pattern was demanded by God. The very first one we can find is in the account of Cain and Abel, where Abel's sacrifice was acceptable to God because he followed a pattern and because his heart was right. In Genesis chapter 6, we have the specifications of an ark. Exodus 25 specifications of the tabernacle, the furnishings, the clothing for the priests, the way that sacrifices were to be offered. As we read through the Old Testament, we will find many examples of minute details that God has demanded for Israel to follow. Everything was to be done according to the pattern. This same language, the same wording, is also used in the New Testament. We find those words as according to. They're found 120 times in the New Testament. God gave Israel a pattern to follow. But God has also given us a pattern to follow. God wanted Israel to have a relationship with him. The first of the four Ten Commandments had to do with Israel's relationship to God. No other gods before me. Do not make any graven images. Do not take the name of God in vain. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. All these are relationship things. And God wanted Israel to be distinctively different from everyone else around them. And just as Moses told the Israelites in Exodus 32, verse 29, that they were to set apart to be the Lord's people, Peter said in the very same thing in 1 Peter 2 and verse 9 that we are in chosen people, a peculiar people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. How 
how are we to enter into that special relationship with God? Romans chapter 6 gives us the pattern that makes us children of God. Starting in verse 17. Paul writes, but thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching or pattern to which you were committed. What is that standard, <coughs> that pattern, that form of teaching that makes us children of God? Faith. For Jesus said, unless you believe I am he, you will die in your sins. Repentance. Again, Jesus said, unless you repent, you will surely die. Confession. Paul said, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And baptism. Paul again says, you were all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For all who were baptized into Christ have been clothed with Christ. And as with that pattern for us to get into a, a father-son, father-daughter relationship, God gives us a pattern also to maintain that relationship. <coughs> These verses tells us what is necessary to maintain our relationship with God. Then we'll start with Philippians 3 and verse 17. Brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. Romans 8, verse 29. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. In 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. In 1 John 1, verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. In these verses, we have four things that we must do to maintain our relationship with God. We must conform to the image, the pattern of Jesus. We must fo follow Paul's Christ-like example. We must live as Jesus has lived. And we must walk in the light, walk according to the pattern. Now, friends, we can lose our relationship with God. But if we do the things that we have just read, to the best of our abilities, we're not going to do these things perfectly. But if we do them to the best of our abilities, we will succeed. Friends, we are not only to follow the pattern that God has set before us. We have a responsibility to be a pattern also. 1 Timothy 4, verse 12. Paul telling Timothy here, Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Those words were not just meant for Timothy. They were meant for each and every one of us. That is the example that we are to set for those around us. Whether it's our spouses, our children, our neighbors, our friends, our co-workers, those are examples that we must set. We are all to be examples of this. We are to be a pattern for others to follow. God had them construct a tabernacle 
so that they would have a place to worship God. And God gave them explicit instructions for both the tabernacle and the worship services. Right on down to the amount of loops in the curtains. Right down to the wood that was to be used. The colors. The garments. Everything. All of us know what is unacceptable worship. Jesus, in Matthew 15, in verses 8 and 9, he said that these people, they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. In John chapter 4, verse 24, Jesus, speaking to the Samaritan woman, said that God is spirit, and those who worship him worship in spirit and truth. Friends, spirit means our hearts, not just our lips. What we do here on the first day of the week is not just a ritual. But we can make it a ritual if all we're doing is showing up to fill a square. If our heart is not here, then our worship is in vain. Worship and obedience that is not from the heart is not according to the pattern that God has set. And that worship is certainly not obedience. The first century church gave us the example, the pattern. It's the one that we use to this very day. For instance, in Acts chapter 20 and verse 7, we find that the church was gathered together on the first day of the week. They gathered for the breaking of bread, but they also gathered to listen to Paul speak. Teaching is preaching. In Acts 2 and verse 42, it says that the church continually devoted themselves to prayer. In 1 Corinthians 11 and verses 23 through 29, Paul gave the church their instructions for taking of the Lord's Supper on the first day of the week. And in 1 Corinthians 16 and verses 1 and 2, Paul gave instructions for giving. Mark 14 verse 26 tells us that Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper. That after they finished with the Lord's Supper, they sang a hymn. Colossians 3 and verse 16, Paul writes, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. You see, just as God had that pattern for the Israelites in the Old Testament, he has also given us a pattern today as a New Testament church. And God has always wanted his people to live a certain way. We find the framework of God's kind of morality in the Ten Commandments. As Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 10 in the first 11 verses, if you'll read this along with me, 1 Corinthians 10. For I do not want you unaware, brothers, that our fathers were all under a cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them, God was not pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things took place as examples for us. That we might not desire evil as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality. 
as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents. Nor grumble, as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our instructions on whom the end of ages has come. Two times in this verse is the word has been translated as example. The same word that was used in Hebrews 5 and verse 8. Or 8 verse 5, I'm sorry. When we read Galatians chapter 5 and we start in verses 16 through, through 21, we read of all those things that God hates. All those things that we see that condemns a man. It's a morality thing. And Paul contrasts those with verses 22 and 23 with the fruits of the Spirit. And so we ask, are we living by God's plan of morality today? You know, there are those who contend that the Bible is a love letter from God. That it's not a blueprint for living. And they also might try to tell us, well, you have to decide which one you want to use. Do you want it to be a love letter from God, or do you want it to be a blueprint for living? Friends, we don't have to decide. Because it's not an either. It's not an either. And it's not a choice. The Bible is a love letter, and it is a pattern for living. We don't have to choose one or the other. We must accept both. Are we living by that pattern today in our lives, spiritually within each and every one of us? Our service today has followed that pattern. But as brothers and sisters in Christ, as those of us in attendance here this morning, was our heart in it anyway? Let's not just fill a square. Let's give God our all. Let us come together on this day of the week to worship the pattern that God has set before us. And if you are not a child of God, we want to give you an opportunity this morning to become a part of that pattern. <clears throat> you know, I can go out here and spend $30 and buy me a model car, plastic car, and put it all together. But if I do not follow the instructions, I'd hate to say what that car is going to look like when I'm done. Too many take the instructions here and leave a lot of stuff out. There's parts left over. They have no idea where they fit in. But if we follow this example, everything will fit in its proper place. The gospel tells us that we must repent, that we must confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. That we must have our sins washed away in New Testament baptism. And faith in that baptism that our sins have been forgiven. And then walk in this newness of life. And then take the rest of your life to become better each and every day. And to try with all your heart. If there's anyone that has a need this morning, won't you come as together we stand and we sing. I am the Savior, he's pleading in glory, a dear loving Savior, over friends be few, and now he is watching in tenderness o'er me, but oh, that my Savior were yours. Savior, to 
Sandy has come forward. You know, it's been two years since the girls have been here. They've been here the last two Sundays, and I'll tell you, it's wonderful to see them back with us. We don't realize just how much we miss someone until they return, like Charles and Ruth. Things just seem normal again. Girls being back brings some more normality in our services and, and our Sunday mornings. It's been a hard time for the girls these last two years. Lost their moms, loved ones, and it's difficult sometimes. And even though you're with other people, there's this inside feeling that there's emptiness. Hopefully, together, and here, we can fill those voids. Now, will you bow with me, please? Our Father in heaven, we, we thank you so much for the blessings of life each and every day, the things that we take for granted. For these beautiful girls that have been away for so long, and now they're back. We're just so grateful for them, Lord, for, for their hearts, their willingness, their desires. And while it's difficult for them to explain things, to get their point across, you know exactly, exactly what is going through their hearts and their minds. We ask you watch over Sandy, that you continue to be with her each and every day. And we hope, Lord, that we have this relationship that will last forever and ever, not only in this life, but in the life to come. That you continue to be our guide and stay in all things. And that we continue always, Lord, to lean on you in our times of need. We ask your blessings on Sandy and the girls. To keep them in good spirits. We continue always, Lord, to help us all. We ask for your forgiveness in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our fellowship meal is prepared and I'm sure there's plenty for everyone if you'd like to stay and fellowship a bit. Uh, 
uh, it would be uh, a wonderful thing. This time, if you will, we'll stand and we'll be dismissed with prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day and the many wonderful blessings we enjoy each and every day. We're thankful for the opportunity we've had to come together and worship Thee. We pray that all that's been said and done has been found pleasing to Thee and we can gain much by just simply being here. We pray that You'll continue to be with those that are shut-ins, our elderly members, the ones that are able to, to get out, the ones that aren't. We pray that you'll just continue to strengthen and comfort them. We pray that you'll continue to be with those that were mentioned today in the announcements, the, the folks that are sick, the ones that are uh, been seeing a surgeon this week, or the folks, the ones that's lost loved ones, the folks that may just be traveling, and even the ones that may be struggling in life. Just be with all these, be with ones that look over and tend to them, give them the strength and wisdom that's needed to, to see to these folks. We're thankful for the ones that we have prayed for that return back to us. We're, we're just ever grateful for this. We're thankful for Charles and Ruth and their daughter-in-law daughter -in -law being able to be here with us today. And we're just thankful for that. So we pray that you'll see them with their home safely and they can come back and be with us sooner than later. Continue to be with Sandy and, and the girls. We're thankful that they've been able to be back with us. And that, that just means so much to us here, here at Malden. We pray that you'll just be with us here at Malden. We pray that we'll continue to do thy will, be the congregation you have us to be. Continue to be with our country. Days go past and stray farther and farther away from who you'd have us to be. And we pray that soon these leaders will come to realization and look to you for the decisions they make that affects everyone. Just be with us all as we leave this place. We'll keep us safe and forgive us for our sins. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Oh, uh, maybe I'll...